medical student at the University of Nottingham. Whether you've fallen behind at medical school because you're in your first year and you have no idea how to cope with the increased workload or because you simply have loads of hobbies and commitments, I guarantee that by the end of this video you'll feel so much more reassured and confident in tackling that pile of work that you've let build up. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss out on any of these 10 game-changing tips. As many of you know, at the end of my first term in first year of medical school, I had fallen massively behind. In fact, I was 34 lectures overdue. This was so incredibly overwhelming because I had worked so hard to get to medical school and I really felt like I had just let that opportunity pass me by. However, since starting second year, I have somehow managed to find extra hours in the day and now I'm able to finish all my lectures, invest even more time into YouTube, um, enter an essay competition and take part in many more hobbies. So get your notepad out, make sure to take notes and like, subscribe and turn on the post notifications. Chances are, if you've just started studying preclinical medicine, you're slowly realizing that you're actually studying for a science degree. You're learning about DNA transcription and translation rather than how to suture. And two years into your degree, you've probably only met a patient twice. And even if you are in your clinical phase, you're probably so inundated by your workload that you don't actually have time to enjoy what you're doing. This is why it is vital that you get involved in activities that remind you of your end goal, i.e. being a doctor. Last year, I signed up to an optional module, which meant that I got to witness three neurosurgeries this year I have signed up to the Royal College of Psychiatrists and I'm currently creating a submission for a medical student essay prize and I've also joined loads of societies which are part of my medical school um, and I've started to attend lectures and workshops for specialties that I'm interested in. What this does is it makes your end goal more tangible so you're more likely to be motivated to put in the long hours and get through those endless lectures and it will probably help you procrastinate less. Also it really will complement your learning as you'll learn academic and non-academic skills through these super curricular activities. So to sum up, I highly recommend that you A, get involved in societies and specialties that you're interested in or would like to know more about and attend lectures and workshops. It will also probably be a bonus for your CV. Um, sign up to Royal Colleges of specialties you're interested in or would like to know more about and get involved in their activities and events. And get involved in volunteering opportunities hosted by your medical school. <laughs> I'm sure all of us can relate to becoming overwhelmed about an upcoming deadline, having a mountain of workload, and instead of trying to tackle it, just freezing up and doing nothing. It almost feels like because you don't know where to start, there's no point even trying to tackle it. However, it's so important to remember that me, all of the people that have watched this video, and that thousands more have felt exactly the same way. Medicine isn't easy, and there will be times where you feel like you just can't cope with the amount of content there is to get through. This is a reminder that getting started is the hardest step. So just rip the band-aid off and throw yourself into it. Honestly, stop procrastinating because every single second is so valuable. At university, especially online university, it's so easy to get up at midday, do your morning lectures in the evening, go to bed at midnight, and then once again get up at midday. Believe me, this has basically been me for the last nine months. One of the biggest lessons I've had to learn the hard way is to keep a consistent daily routine of starting early and finishing early. Even if it feels like you can still get the work done by starting at midday. This is because it will ensure that you have enough time in your busy schedule to make time for things which will be good for your mental health and well-being, such as exercise, such as hanging out with friends and self-care. It will create a pressure for you to complete your work in a limited amount of time, thus reducing your likelihood of procrastinating and therefore you're less likely to miss important deadlines. And also, if you do find a lecture particularly tricky, perhaps the lecturer or the lecture material isn't that good then you have enough time in the day to spend a little extra time on it so i 100 percent suggest that you start early 9 a.m end early at like 5 6 p.m just like as if you were at school and even if you think you're a night owl chances are you're not and it's actually being extremely detrimental to your health and your academic success so whatever you do try and facilitate the process of starting to get up early and starting to finish earlier Oh my gosh, this is one of my biggest tips. It's so easy to feel like you need to know everything in medicine. If you've just started learning about physiology, it's so easy to open up a textbook in physiology and feel compelled to write notes on everything you read. 
or to take what your lecturer tells you as 100% the information you need to know in order to pass your exams. The truth is often your lecturer or the textbooks will be giving you much more information than you actually need to know. You have to remember that at the moment you're not working towards becoming a good doctor, you're simply working towards passing each of the stages in order to get to that. You're not expected to be an expert in cardiology. Honestly, your priority at this stage is to have a basic understanding of the heart. So what I suggest you do is A, use the learning objectives at the beginning of your lecture slides to filter what you need to know. For example, if a lecture slide seems unrelated to any of the learning objectives, don't bother writing notes on it, don't bother learning it. If there seems to be a really complex technical bit of biochemistry or molecular genetics, that you can't see yourself being assessed on or your lecturer just briefly touched on it and you simply can't get your head around it stop worrying about it use that time to focus on a different topic that you know will definitely come up lastly don't forget to check with seniors if you need to know a particular topic or a specific point because obviously they'll have done exams and know what tends to come up what doesn't focus on understanding overarching concepts rather than small details as this is what you need to do in order to have a really strong foundation at this point so that you can then learn more technical points as you go through your medical career. And lastly, disclaimer, do not simply not learn something because you don't understand something. All I'm saying is a system that you can use to filter out excess knowledge that is not gonna help you do any better in exams. Oh my God, if you remember one thing from this video, it's to stop using your textbooks. I'm gonna replay that clip again. Oh my gosh, I wish I could go back in time to literally this time last year where I knew we were going to start learning about the mediastinum. What's the first thing I did? Oh, I opened up the section on the mediastinum in my recommended clinical anatomy textbook and wrote about a 3000 word document on the anatomy of the mediastinum. Let me tell you, I don't know one thing that I wrote and it's been the least helpful way that I've revised anatomy. Using textbooks will only present you with an overwhelming amount of information, which will compel you to write notes on every single thing that you read and make you think that you have to memorize it all. In fact, you do not need to know much beyond your lectures. And if you are making your notes because the lecture simply wasn't very good, then use Wikipedia, use Osmosis, use online resources that specifically summarize that topic. Actually, if you find resources that are targeted at medical students online and recent, you'll often find that they have a much more simplified version than perhaps what some of your lecturers even present to you. Your textbooks are only good if you don't understand the concept and you have tried using online resources and it simply doesn't click and therefore you need the information presented in a different way. Unlike school, there is absolutely no shame in reaching out to your seniors for their notes or to help trying to understand the topic. After all, they have been where you are now and they've done it all before. Understandably, there is value in creating your own notes and material and I definitely wouldn't take advantage of using your seniors for all your lecture notes. But if you're extremely overwhelmed with the workload, then you should definitely reach out to a senior and ask for a set of notes just to simply help alleviate um, your to-do list. Additionally, okay, this is my biggest tip, is to find out whether your medical society has teaching sessions run by like third, fourth year, fifth year students. Because at the University of Nottingham, there are teaching sessions run by the medical society which are just so helpful. They cover content that we're covering right now and they make the content so much more concise because once again, as I said, they know what you need to know and what you don't need to know. And also because they've also struggled with similar topics like you, they have found shortcuts and easier ways to memorize information. So yeah, I definitely recommend this. Make a plan as to how you're gonna tackle the workload that you have on your to-do list, which is achievable and realistic. Don't go wild and tell yourself you're gonna complete 30 lectures in one weekend because you're probably not gonna achieve this, you're gonna fall behind and you're gonna feel even less motivated to try and tackle it again. So instead of telling yourself you're gonna do all your work on one weekend, why not tell yourself that after you finish all your work, you're gonna set aside time to do half a lecture from your to-do list. Setting aside half an hour a day is very easy and it's something that you can definitely find the time to do, especially if you have a good daily routine, like I mentioned previously. If you do this, you will be sacrificing your well-being or current workload and you will be able to catch up over time. 
Never sacrifice your mental health or well-being for medical school. In fact, you need to continue taking the time out to hang out with your friends on the weekend, keep doing exercise, keep reading, keep watching that TV show you like on Netflix, because this is what's gonna help you to feel refreshed and recharged so you are able to put in your 100% when it comes to studying. And obviously what you want is an increased output, which is what it's gonna help you to do. Make the most out of the pastoral system available at your medical school. Tutors know how stressful a career in medicine can be and the last thing they want is for your mental health to be jeopardized and your fitness to practice to be compromised. So if you really are struggling, arrange a meeting with your pastoral tutor, contact your wellbeing team, um, or any medic peers that you have in the years above. Even contact your GP so that any of these people can help you come up with an action plan on how to tackle your workload and any other stresses or extenuating circumstances you might be facing. They want the best for you too. I hope you found this video really useful. I certainly wish I had known these tips before going into medicine and I hope I've been able to help you guys feel more reassured and confident about tackling the workload that you have overdue. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on the post notifications and let me know in the comments what you thought and you can always dm me if you want any advice or just to get in touch um, I'll try my best to look at these and as always best of luck with your medical career and I'll see you in the next one